Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Friday. It's Daryl here. It is bright and freaking early, man. It's not even 3 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, this is going to be an interesting video. This is going to be one of those videos where later in the afternoon or tonight, I'm going to wake up after I fall asleep and I'm going to be like, and I'm going to remember making this video. And I'm going to be like, oh my God, should I download, should I uh, delete the, that video? So I'm going to talk, I talk about this as like a confessional and I'm going to talk about some touchy subjects here. There's going to be some adult subject matter that I'm going to talk about in this video. Okay, let, let me say this too. I, I, there's, I feel a lot of pressure every morning. I've made a video here for you guys every single morning for probably like two years. I don't, I don't know if I've ever missed one morning. And the main reason I like to do this is because I know that there's... Uh, a small group of people, you know, I'll see the same like 12 people in the first hour clicking on my videos and the same 60 people in the first beginning of the, the morning. And I, I feel like if you are good enough, if you like watching my videos, then I should be, I should be have enough uh, drive to get up and make sure I have make a, a good video for you to watch. I, I feel very blessed. I, I feel flattered and blessed that people actually click on my videos. So I make these, I try to make the best videos for you guys. Okay, sometimes the best way to explain a video is to give you how I got this idea, the, the timeline, all right? So I started thinking about this. I started thinking about commercials. I was going through all the news feeds this morning and I saw this story about Tucker Carlson interviewing Vladimir Putin and and that I I just despise that I I think Vladimir Putin is a despicable man and Tucker Carlson same thing, uh, but anyway I'm not that's not what this video is about, but I saw a couple a couple commercials yesterday, and I don't know what it is I I have about thirty channels the uh, about thirty channels I have an antenna here, and uh, I see the commercial same commercials over and over and over and over and some of them just ear most of them a lot of them just irritate the bejesus out of me and uh two of them yesterday came to mind and i i started to really i started to go into some introspection i, I started to ask myself why why is it because it doesn't go along with my my nature with my political leanings that i get so irritated with these videos and i started to ask myself i started to, to you know to, to introspect uh, some introspection. Why, why, why do these commercials bother me so much? One of these commercials I couldn't find and one I'm going to use on the thumbnail. I'm going to tell you about, about both these, these commercials right now. Uh, the first commercial is the front door commercial with the guy dancing to uh, man. I feel like a woman. I hate this commercial. I, I, I hate the guy dancing because he's short and bald. And, you know, and I'm like, well, it, it's not like me to, to, to get so angry over stuff like that. But the thing that really bothers me about this commercial is I like that song. Uh, who is it? Shania Twain, right? I, I didn't even think of saying that. And I, I, that's a, to me, that's a sexy song, you know, and she's a sexy woman. Like I've talked about how I like long hair brunettes and everything. And to me, he just ruins this song for me. This This short little bald dude changing the lyrics to this song and the thing that really bothers me and i don't know why this bothers me so much he gets up on the on the i'll put the link down below so you can watch the commercial he gets the he's you know doing the redone words to this song man i feel like a woman and he's you know singing about the front door app and he gets on top of the table and he's talking about his quiche and he starts dancing and the part where he talk he opens his flannel shirt and he, and he wiggles his hips I hate that. I hate it. I hate watching a commercial where a guy is like wiggling his hips. And there's another part of the commercial that really bothers me. It's where his hand, his hand is holding up the phone and you could see his forearm and it's hairy. And that bothers me. It, you know, so I start asking myself, why does this, you know, why do I hate this so much? Because, you know, I am, I consider myself a supporter of the LGBTQ community and I'm very open minded. Before I get into that, let me talk about this other video or this other commercial. I couldn't find this commercial. It's got couples dancing. It's got this very large man and a woman dancing. And I, I don't know. I, th I thought it was for credit scores. I'm not sure if that's what it was for. They have numbers on their T-shirts and they're dancing. They're celebrating these. I, I thought it was for higher credit scores, um, but I couldn't find the commercial this morning. 
But the particular part of this commercial that bothers me is there's two guys dancing, two young guys. And one of the guys kind of arches his back when he's dancing. And he's like, and he's got a look of like ecstasy on his face. And he's like, like that. And I just hate that. I get angry at this guy. I, I almost get like, I, I would almost feel like a bully. Like I'd want to pick on this guy because of the way he's dancing. And I started to ask myself, you know, that's not you, Daryl. Why, why, you know, what is it about me, my insecurities? You know, why do I hate this so much? Why, well, why, you know, why, why am I judging this dude? Is it, is it the dancing? Is it... No, but it's not the dancing. It's it's him that I, I, I focus in on, the way he arches his back. And he, he, he has this look of ecstasy like that. And I just despise it. And, you know, don't, if you watch my channel, you know I'm an LGBTQ uh, supporter. And more than that, here's where we're really going to go off the rails on this video. I've had same-sex experiences, as I have a lot of young guys. I think I looked it up down below the Kinsey report, 38% of males have had same sex experiences to orgasm. Okay. And 18% of females. And I've known this and it happened, it happened to me. And I'm going to talk about this now that I'm 58 years old. I really just don't care. I know who I am now. I know I'm straight. I know what I like. And even if I wasn't straight, you know, I just, I just really don't care anymore. So I'm going to talk about this. Okay, let me go back to uh, the hairy arm thing. The first thing, I, I don't know what it is because I, I, I'm Native American and I don't have any body hair. And I've always been very proud of that. And the women that I've been with have seemed to like that. So it was, it was always something that I like, that I'm proud of in myself. I have no, you know, no body. I don't shave or anything. You know, I have no... I have no very little, no body hair. Uh, I, I, I've never been able to grow a beard. Never. I, I had a cheesy mustache for a while. Uh, any hair I do grow is just in little patches, like a, like five hairs here, six, you know, six long scraggly hairs here. But mostly the, the, the women that I was with, mostly in my younger years, they're like, oh, you're so smooth. That's so sexy. I don't know if they were just saying that or what, but you know, so why is it that seeing this guy's hairy arm irritates me so much you know it seems like I have there's something about me that I'm I'm insecure about so I started thinking about these of what happened when I was younger because I've had I've had same sex experience uh let me fill you in on that that's where we're going to transition to now like I said the links for that commercial I, if you guys could tell me what that other commercial is the, the couple's dancing like the guy arching his back with a number it's a white t-shirt and he's got a number on his shirt Please, if you if you could identify this commercial for me. All right, so that's going to skip ahead. I told you guys I grew up out in the woods, and there was no neighbors. There was one other house that was uh, at the edge of the park because uh, my part my father was the park ranger, and he died when I was nine. Now that might have had some some something to do with this too, because I had no strong male figure in my life. Uh, I, I just think that young guy, that guys in general their sex drive starts very young. And I just remember when I was younger, it was just, you know, I think we, young men, the sex drive is off the charts. It's just a constant, constant thing, you know, where parts of you are standing up to be noticed at, at all the time, you know, and it's just a kind of something that's just in your mind 24 hours a day when, when you're, you know, when you first start puberty or before. And uh, so we, I grew up in the woods, and one uh, another boy moved in next door to me. And this is the only person I had to play with. It, it wasn't like, or, or you know, hang out with or ride our bikes. You know, we'd, go, we'd ride our bikes, and we'd go explore in caves and stuff like that. Uh, and he was two years younger than me, and he was English. He had just moved here from England about maybe, I don't know, maybe six, seven years earlier. So it, there's, there's things I didn't know about that, that seemed odd about him to me, and I was curious about him. Um, and you know, we were the only two, two families in a, a couple of miles radius in this park. So, you know, this is the only person I had, you know, the only other young person I had to hang out with. And, uh, so our, our parents became friends and this was after my, my dad died when I was nine. So we would go visit them on vacation camping 
And I still remember this, that, uh, you know, after we went in the, the ocean, we had our bathing suits on. And our parents, you know, we wanted to go take a shower in the campground showers. And they were like, they were like 25 cents or 50 cents to take a shower. So our parents got this bright idea to, to let us share a shower to save money. So we went in the same shower together. And, uh, you know, we, we stripped, this is the first, and they, 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 they thought it would be good for us because in high school, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to strip down for the showers and everything. So it's going to be good for you, you know, to start being comfortable around other guys, you know, and I don't think they realized what was going to happen. And, uh, you know, so we stripped, the first thing I noticed about this guy is he had different underwear. I had the tidy whiteies and he had this, it looked like a bathing suit and, uh, you know, like, you know, they were, they were like English underwear. And I was like, that's so weird, man. Why do you wear a bathing suit for underwear? And then once we got in the shower, I realized he was uncircumcised. I didn't know what that was at the time. So, you know, so I thought this guy, I thought this poor kid was, was really deformed. You know, I, I really didn't know about that. My mother had taught me, you know, about the birds and the birds and the bees, but she hadn't really got into, you know, other guys, what other guys might look like down there. I'm circumcised. And, uh, you know, I was, I was like, what, 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 is, what's wrong with you, man? What, what is that? You know? And, uh, so there was some curiosity there. I remember other times, this is when we were probably like 10, 11 years old, just going into puberty. And we would, we were, we were hanging out at his house, playing with matchboxes and building forts and stuff. And we found the, his father's penthouses in the closet. And we started going through the penthouses. These are 1970 penthouses. And you can barely, you know, we're trying to see what women look like down there. You know, we're so curious. We have never seen, you know, so we're like, I'm like, here's a picture. Look, you can see what, you know, because we, 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 you know, we know basically it's, you know, we, we know there's something there, but, we, you know, there's a curiosity is off the scales, you know. And like I said, this the sex drive starts kicking in. And uh, eventually we started getting curious about each other. And, uh, you know, I remember, we you know, we didn't want to see each other's faces. So we'd cover our faces, you know, because we were embarrassed, you know, and we'd touch, you know, just to see like what's going on down the other person. And how it progressed to actual uh, mouth to using using other parts, I don't quite remember, but it did. Uh, I remember this one instance where we were in a camper. You know, we, we, we'd hang out every day, and we were in a camper, and we were kind of exploring, let's just say. And like I said, we were embarrassed. You know, we didn't want to see each other's faces when we were doing this. We didn't, you know... So we didn't want to see each other's face at all. And I, <laughs> this is crazy. I never told another soul this. So we put our shorts over our heads to cover our eyes. So we're in the camper with, you know, these two beds on either side to pop up. And uh, we're exploring each other. You know, him laying one way and me laying the other way on a bed. And all of a sudden we hear the door open. And it's his father. So we both sit up. We take the shorts off our heads. There's nothing else. We're, we're wearing nothing else. And we look over it and it's his father. You know, I just, I still, uh, it just, you know, I, I, I just, I just quietly put everything on. His father didn't say anything. Just, you know, he's this English dude. And he just looked at us and uh, I just, you know, prayed up, put everything on and just got the, got the hell out of there. And I went home. And I was waiting for my mother, you know, so I'm like, I'm, I'm sure he's going to call my mother. You know, his parents are going to call my mother. His mother and father are going to call my mother, you know, and I'm going to have to explain this. So I'm just, you know, the, the fear factor is off the scales that, you know, this, this whole thing's been discovered. And uh, she never says a word. I, I never say, you know, but this is something weird that I, I, I've often blamed. I've often, you know, I've told you guys before, my mother started dating a police officer and some very bad things happened. He started taking some liberties with me when I was younger for years, doing, doing terrible, god awful things. I won't get it. Every time I get into this, my, I lose the, uh, my monetization. So I'm not going to get too into it. But it's it, the, wor the worst things you could think of. You know, this guy, he was a police, he was a cop. And uh, I, I didn't like the guy from the beginning. And when, I, when his, my mother would get comfortable enough after a year or two to leave me alone with him, me and my sister, and I was worried about my sister, but he wasn't interested in my, my sister, he was interested in me. 
And looking back, this is something I wonder. I wonder if my mother was too embarrassed to say anything about, you know, the, say the other, the, my friend's father did call up and talk to my mother, but my mother maybe was too embarrassed to talk to me about it. We've never talked about this. This is the first time I've ever said any of this out loud. So I wonder if she said something to him, to the cop she was dating, because he's a guy, you know, he's like, a, he's supposed to be like a father figure there, you know, in her mind, you know, and maybe she, she mentioned this to him. Well, this thing with Daryl just came up, the next door neighbors, you know, they found Daryl and Stuart doing this. And what if that guy thought that was an opening, you know, that, that, that I would be more willing to do what he wanted, you know, me, you know, I, I look at, I was blaming myself, you know, somehow that that was all my fault that happened to me. And this is something, this is the first time I've said any of this. Okay. I'm going to stop right there. I'm at 15 minutes. Uh, that's a long video already. I know there's going to be guys that deny this, but think about this. 38% of guys have had these experiences. I don't care. At this point, I don't care. I, you know, like I said, I know who I am. I like who I am. And I really just don't care anymore. Who knows that, you know, what happened when I was, you know, a, a teen or preteen, you know, I'm secure in who I am, but I guarantee you there's a, there's a whole bunch. The majority of guys will be like, Oh no, we, I, I don't know about you, but we never did. You know, I never did that. I never heard of that. We were, we played football, you know, we played with GI Joes and we played football, you know, you're, you're, you're a weirdo, you know, that's what I'm expecting in the comments. Remember this out of every three guys, that's, that's what, that's almost 40%. So that's, that's almost more, that's more than one in three guys have experienced this. So next time you're together with your buddies and there's three of you, one of you have had the same sex experience sometime in their lives. Think of that. Yeah, there's a little something to think about next time you hang out with your buddies. All right. I'll be back later with another video. The links will be down below. Please tell me what that commercial is where the guy's dancing with the number on his shirt. Two guys, white t-shirts, black number, guys dancing because it's driving me crazy. All right. I'll be back later with another video. You guys have a good Friday.